Hi, welcome. Thanks for coming. This is Don Jessup, the Breakthrough Guy, and my beautiful wife, Rachel. We are here again Tuesday night, 8 p.m., and of course, we're going to record this and post it later, so if you missed this first part, it's okay. What we want to start our topic today with is what we call the power of consistency, the value of consistency, and how to be more effective as a leader for your horse, which a lot of you guys are horse people. Thank you for coming and joining. And a lot of uh, the followers we have aren't horse people. So we want to give you some really basic leadership skills. And one of them is to be consistent. And I have a really simple formula to follow to help you stay consistent with your horse or with yourself with specific skill sets. And I'm going to start with what we call old skills or known skills. These are things that you already know, things you're already good at. And just about every day you want to be doing those as, as kind of a warm-up to, to get you into the flow, to get you doing your daily thing. And then you need to be working on something that's recent, something that you want to improve on. And once you've really sort of honed that in a little bit day by day, you want to start adding new skills. Here's the problem. Most people are adding new skills almost daily or weekly. And they're, especially with horses, they're doing, they learn this new thing. They see this thing on YouTube and they're like, I should be doing that. I, I got this lesson with this instructor and he says, I should be doing that. And so they find themselves constantly switching from task to task and confusing their followers, their, their, their horses. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Stay consistent. Stay in the frame of mind where you stick with something that you know, you improve on something that's fairly recent, and you only add new skills when you are to the point where this recent skill is so easy that it becomes an old skill, a known skill for you. Does that make sense? So, you're moving up the ladder only when this recent skill becomes an old skill. And that can take quite a long time. So, uh, and I have an expert here who is an expert at consistency. Her name is Rachel. <laughs> Everybody say hi to Rachel. <laughs> so, uh, I believe we've had a couple of questions uh, come in. And one of the questions I remember was, and you've got it there on your phone, something related to um, flying lead changes. Now, this is a huge topic, flying lead changes. There's lots of technical detail. It's a, it's a horsemanship term we use to talk about how to get a horse from go, to go from the left to the right in a very specific uh, sequence of events. It's very beautiful but it takes a long time to, to practice. What's the question? Specifically? The question is, how long should it take to get to where I can do flying lead changes with my horse? How long should it take to where I can get fly, to do flying lead changes with my horse? Uh, answer is, is this, a long freaking time. Uh, now, horses can do a flying lead change today. You could get lucky and do a flying lead change today. But to get to the point where it's not a new skill, it's not a recently learned skill, but it's an old skill, it's easy to do, that can take a long time. How long? How long? What would you say in time-wise? Well, it depends on what the, what the horse knows and what the rider knows. You know, green mm -hmm. on green takes a bit longer than if I were to teach a, a young horse. Mm -hmm. um, I could get a young horse to understand, or an older horse, but just a new horse to flying lead changes, to understand how to do a flying lead change in about two weeks. That means understand. That doesn't mean that someone else can get on and make it happen. That just means that with me and that horse, it would take two weeks every day being consistent. And of course, they have a really good foundation um, with a lot of other things underneath it. And it would take two weeks. Now to get it to where I can think about doing a flying lead change and they do it just with me. So I'm starting to get them whenever I ask for them. Now you're talking about a couple of months to just get it right on. And then, of course, to get it tempies and all that kind of thing. Okay, so you're talking about a horse that ha that already has a really great foundation, already has a great walk, trot, and canter, very balanced, yep. very calm, very responsive, yes. and you're you're saying it would take yes. months. It it would take months to where they to, to where it's an old to where it's an old <laughs> skill. To, to where it's an old skill, and you can just go be cantering along and go bloop, and they just cha -ching over the right, other side. Okay. So yeah. take take for instance something that's um, hi guys, thanks for joining. Take, for instance, something that is, uh, 
is, let's say, green, um, barely under saddle, barely, barely, maybe just had a couple of days of walk, trot, canter, maybe 30 days with a, with a trainer. So how long is it going to take that horse to get going? Again, it's going to vary on the horse and on the rider, um, but it could take that horse a good year because you're trying to actually get a foundation on the horse. So again, you could get flying lead changes with them. Okay, let's say it's pretty you. Quickly. Let's say it's you because you are, uh, in my opinion, Rachel here is a master of consistency. She does not get distracted. She doesn't. True. She doesn't see a YouTube video of someone doing something cool and think, "Oh, I want to do that." She sticks day by day by day with the same thing until it's really good. Mm -hmm. So, um, how long would it take you? Let's say I give you a horse that's got 30 days of training, walk, trot, and canter. Uh, it's just learning. How long is it going to take you to get to the point where a flying lead change, a very advanced maneuver, is happening consistently like it's an old, easy skill? One to two months, depending on the horse, for that kind of green horse. To be where I can just, well, boom, and they get it. Not where I'm helping them and using a jump and... Um, uh, what about kind of just? What about someone else then? Could somebody else get on and do <clears throat> the same thing with that horse? Would it be that good in just one to two months? Only if they asked exactly the same way that I do. <laughs> so let me be really, really clear. If you were going to train this horse to do flying lead changes for somebody else, maybe a novice rider, how long would it take? Uh, longer, because I would teach that horse with bigger aids. Um, it wouldn't be as refined so that anyone could then get on and find it really easy. Um, but then in saying that, um, my horse Polly is really, really good at flying lead changes. So I believe that almost anyone could get on and if I told them what to do, they could make it happen. But she's been doing flying lead changes for, for years. For years now. Yeah. So it is solid, solid. So what she's saying, essentially, is that it can take years. And I remember talking to Walter Zettel, who's a, another master horseman, uh, talking about flying lead changes taking years to develop. And that doesn't mean you couldn't get it on day one. It just means it's not an old skill. And the question that pops up is, when do you advance? When do you add something new into what you're doing with your horse? And what we're suggesting is don't add something new. Until you can put it on your list, your goal list. That's right. You can see something and go, yeah. Mark it and go, yeah, I want to do that someday. But <laughs> right? don't start doing that today or tomorrow or next week. Until when? Until, until... until you have a space free. And that space is, back to what Don has on the board, all my new, my new skill is now a, a becoming solid. So I've got room to add a new skill because my recent skill is now... Just solid. It's in there. like Polly, for example, has flying lead changes. They're there. Mm -hmm. It is not a new skill. So now, sit on your chair. you want me to sit on the chair? <laughs> no, no, no. You don't have to sit down. I'm just gonna move. Go ahead. <laughs> so, so um, what was they saying? So Polly's flying lead changes for her is not a new skill. So I have room to add something new. So I've added Piaf. Now Piaf is not a new skill anymore. It's starting to become. A pretty cool skill. So then I, I've added Spanish Trot. And that's now starting to become a pretty solid skill. So next I'm going to add Passage. So you just keep building. But I don't add that new thing until the one before it is just in there. Like Passage and Piaf and Spanish Trot. I didn't even try those until my flying lead changes are just right there. So... Um... So it could be weeks or months before you add something new into your training program. And of course, this crosses over into, into our own personal lives as well. I mean, how quickly do you look and seek out new things because you're bored mm -hmm. and avoid making something really good, something masterful, something really easy and, and uh, fantastic? So, of course, we're being, becoming... Uh, trying to encourage consistency. We want to show you the value of it, but also give you a perspective of how long things can take so that you're not discouraged. So um, we had a couple of questions, some of them related to that. And what I want to do is invite you to, to uh, I want to say thank you for joining me, yeah. joining us here. But I also want to say, um, if you guys have some questions, anything related to leadership, 
confidence, uh, skill development, horsemanship, anything at all, consistency, <laughs> anything at all, we invite you to, to share those questions with us right now here on this live video. That's what makes it so much fun. And in a few minutes, we're going to be giving away something that we find that's ex so extraordinarily, extraordinarily valuable from an emotional perspective. But we had a few questions come in. And again, please, while you're here, feel free to ask any questions related to your own challenges. Okay. Our question, my next question is, my horse is super lazy. Mm. I have trouble getting him to go. How do I encourage him to go without damaging his trust in me? I don't want to scare or hurt him. Ooh, if you guys hear that. She doesn't want to scare or hurt the horse, but the horse won't respond. Essentially, that's what it sounds like to me. She's having trouble getting the horse to go, so he's not responsive. But uh, she's afraid of injuring the relationship by, by asking or demanding that that horse respond. Uh, I, I guess I can only say this. Don't be afraid of ruining the relationship because if you are afraid of ruining the relationship, you're always going to walk on eggshells. Uh, you, you'll be too timid to get the responses you want. So I totally encourage being firm and assertive and then balancing it very, very quickly with that kind, friendly nature that good you job, already good have. Job, good job, good yeah. job. Uh, we, <laughs> it's like getting hit by an electric fence. You don't hate the electric fence afterwards. You're wary of it. You're sensitive to it. But you're not angry with it because it, it's just there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, and, it, and it's a force of energy and electricity that you don't want to, to uh, bargain with. But you can still work around and be with. Um, sometimes people get frustrated. So here's what, don't ever be afraid of being firm. But definitely don't get frustrated. Cause, and you can't always prevent yourself from becoming frustrated. But try to avoid being frustrated because... That's where the relationship is damaged. It's not damaged in the physical contact you have to make to get a horse to respond to you. I mean, I just came from a clinic in Florida. Uh, just last night got in at like midnight. So um, I had three fantastic days with these students in Florida teaching about leadership and horses. And uh, one of the students had a very, very similar question. You know, I'm afraid of being too firm and... and we demonstrated with one of the horses how valuable it is to be firm and to get the response. And what I basically told this this uh, this lady who's working with me, this young lady, this wonderful young lady, Maggie. Thank you. I know I know we had this conversation at the clinic. Um, what I told Maggie is, I don't want you to be a um, a bee without a stinger. Does that make sense? Don't be a bee without a stinger. You've got to have, don't just buzz around your horse hoping that they'll respond. Sometimes you have to send that little shock to get the response. If you're having trouble going, definitely find some way to add some electricity, but then immediately balance it with that wonderful nature you have inside you. What else we got? Okay, the next question is, and um, this is one of my favorite questions. Um, which relates to power of consistency. When should I move on to new things? I don't want to bore my horse. Oh, this is a good one. This is a really one. good one. <laughs> don't want to bore your horse. First of all, I want to say that is... Oh, you, 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 that question's, that a, question's good a good one because it gets me all turned upside down. And I'll tell you why. Your horse doesn't get bored nearly as easy as you think. People don't get bored. We get frustrated. Horses get frustrated, but not bored. We desperately need consistency. It's only when something becomes so consistent that we get bored with it. It's only when we get really, when it becomes easy that we get bored with it. Uh, but when things are still a little bit difficult or a little bit hard, they're not boring. They're challenging. They're frustrating, but not boring. So when should you move on? Um, the answer is related to the, the little formula, one, two, three. You have old skills, you have recently learned skills, and new skills. Don't move on to new skills until those recently learned skills become easy. They become old skills. And if you're afraid of your horse being bored, I want to say, and Rachel can probably confirm here, is it, it's not going to happen. Um, the only way that's going to happen is if you do the exact same thing every single day with zero variety. Uh, let's say you go out and you trot for 
20 times around the round pin on your horse. Um, and that's all you do. That's the only thing you do. Well, your horse is going to, after a couple of weeks, your horse is going to be like, this is boring. I know how to do this. This is super, super easy and it's not fun anymore. So you have to add something into the arena or the round pin to make that interesting again uh, or add a new task. Um, but to do something once or twice and say that your horse is bored with it is a big, big no-no. Don't do that. It's not true. It's not even one bit close to being true. Horses do not get bored that quickly. And you'll find that humans don't get bored that quickly either. We just get uh, frustrated that things don't go as well as we'd hoped or aren't as consistent as we'd hoped. So, Any comments or thoughts on that as well? I don't want to... Taking over. Taking over. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, often I find that people uh, say their horse is bored, but they don't actually understand what it is that they've been doing in the first place. Just something really simple. I'm going to go ask my horse to back up by putting my fingers on, on their face. And if my horse doesn't just back up straight away, then I know that my horse doesn't know it or understand it. And if they do back up straight away, they're still not bored. They're responding really nicely. So I can add exuberance or ask for just one step or three steps or change it up slightly. But it's not boring. And but you have to keep doing it because if this doesn't work, then you go, oh, it's not boring. They don't understand. And I guess that's the difference between, oh, I think my horse is bored because I keep asking this, but they're not doing it. So yeah. when I hope a horse, that clarifies that. Yeah, when a horse starts getting <laughs> getting uh, non-responsive, it does not mean they're bored. It means they're just distracted or confused. They don't know why they're doing this thing again. Um, they're trying to figure out what details you're specifically looking for. So don't move on too quickly is what we're trying to say with this whole session here is don't move on. If you've got something that you really want to do with your horse, uh, mark it. Put it on your dreams and goals list. But don't go do that. Not yet. Stick with what you've been doing. Make, make something magical happen. Be really consistent uh, and, until that recently learned thing becomes a, an old skill, an old hat, something easy. And then you can... Let the old things you used to do just flake away and start something brand new. It's a lot of fun. Masters. Masters in leadership and horsemanship. They do three things with their horse. Three things with their followers and that's it. One, something old, something known, something easy. Two, something fairly new, fairly challenging um, and fairly new. And then three, and only three when, when things start going well, something brand new that they've never done before. And that just cycles through that really simple formula. Great. I have one, Ooh, one other one question. More question. One more question. This one is not about horses, though. Um, but they've asked, how, how do I believe in myself? How can I trust that the future will be better when everything is going pretty bad? I don't feel very positive, And I don't feel that things will work out the way I had hoped that they would. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, we get a lot of these questions because we're not always just talking about horses with people. We're talking about leadership with people. And some of the challenges that people meet life, life is, challenging. is <laughs> life circumstances. And, uh, and so she's basically in a, in a position where she's not trusting the future is going to be really, really great. There's, there's only two things you can do. Uh, one of them is to believe that you don't know this the future completely there's no way to know for sure 100 percent sure what the future holds for you so there's a thread of hope that it's going to be fantastic that it's going to be better than you ever imagined that what you're going to go through will make you into this person that's unbelievably strong and beautiful uh, and you can hang on to that thread of hope so I encourage you, of course, to to seek that thread of hope and focus on it. And the only other thing you can do is, um, if you absolutely believe that it's not going to be, I mean, it's not it's not a maybe it's not going to be better. It's a for sure not going to be better. If that's accurate, um, then you must, you, you've got to resign to it. You basically say, it's out of my hands, it's out of my control. There's absolutely nothing that I can do 
to make this better at this point. I've got to let it go and I've got to focus on something new. I've got to just ride this one out. The storm's coming. I've got to bunker down weather for it and, and then, uh, then the storm will pass and we'll move on beyond it. My mom's got a really good saying, 24 hour rule. Do you have enough food to eat right now? Do you have somewhere to sleep tonight? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and reassess in 24 hours because usually by the next day, it's like, oh, yeah. I'm doing a lot better than I thought I was. Right, so don't freak out about some things you can't control. You can't control the weather. Um, you, you, you don't want it to be rainy on Saturday, but you can't control it and it looks like it's going to be rainy. So just resign to it and it's going to be okay. The storm will pass. If there's a thread of hope that you can hang on to, that maybe, maybe it'll be pretty fantastic, uh, then it's worth hanging on to. Uh, you're stronger than you think, a lot stronger than you think, and you're also not alone. Uh, thank you for that question. It's a really great question. Uh, in, yeah. in, in relation to that, um, we have something we want to share with you. So, Yeah, thank you guys for coming and watching and, and mm. being with us today. Uh, please send us questions, email us. Um, Message us on Facebook, ask us your questions, mm -hmm. tell us what you want to talk about. Um, we'd love to help you out. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in trialing Voice of Power, please write us a message or send us an email mm -hmm. again. Wait, what is and, go ahead, go ahead. and we are going to, we choose some, someone once a week. Uh, we're not saying who it is because we just want to keep that confidential. Some people don't want their name put out there. Um, and it might not just be for you, it may be for someone else. So please um, write down why you feel someone else should, should get that trial. Voice of Power is a personal mm -hmm. audio inspiration. So we give you a detailed form, you get to write down what's going on for you. It is that motivation when you need a little pat on the back, a little help. Um, you you want to try and achieve something. Um, we, we want to stand behind you and help you get there. Right. So, so to be clear, we're going to give away something. Uh, mm -hmm. Not right here. We're going to give it away this week. And to get it, all you have to do is respond to this video. Send us a comment or an email or, a, or a, what is it called? Messenger. Message. Instant message. Mm -hmm. Private message. Um, that basically explains why you would like some extra support. And on your journey, whether it's a life circumstance or it's a horse circumstance or it's some kind of leadership circumstance, we want to support you and we want to give you something for free. It's a very high dollar valued system we've created. It's a form of coaching that's unlike anything else in the world. We mm -hmm. call it voice of power. It's going to change the way you think. It's going to change the way you behave because you think differently and you'll get totally different results with, with your life and with your horses and with whatever you're focused on. Uh, you can check it out. What's the website? Send, SendMeLife.com SendMeLife.com You can follow us for more. You can ask us questions. And this week, <laughs> this week we will be giving away a trial to that Voice of Power program. Uh, and it'll blow your mind. It will blow you That's away. Awesome. So thank you, uh, thank you for coming. I hope you... Uh, Post this and share this and make it go viral. And be viral consistent. And be consistent. Thank you so much. God bless.